This is Ken Loomer and I'm going to be showcasing one of the greatest drum sets ever made. This is my Slingerland 1970 Buddy Rich Model 80N. And because of the coronavirus, I've been forced not to play with my big band or jazz quartet for the last couple of months. So what I've been doing is I've been fixing my house. I've been going through all my closets and out in the garage and cleaning everything out. I've been checking all the boxes I had and see what's in them. And I found a lot of things relating to this drum set, which I want to share with everybody. I hope everybody is safe and healthy. But first, uh, let me showcase this beautiful 1970 Slingling Buddy Rich drum kit, which I bought in August of 1970 over at Sam Ash Music Store in New York City. I, I ordered these drums I think around June of 1970. My father used to take me to Yankee Stadium. That's This is when I lived in uh, Hartford, Connecticut and Windsor, Connecticut and we used to go to the uh, ball game so before uh, we went to the game, of course, we checked out Sam Ass Music Store because I wanted to buy my first professional drum set. So let me show you a few things that I just found and before I uh, go into detail about this drum set. First, the reason why I got this set, let me show you this picture which I found. My very first concert I ever saw the Buddy Rich Big Band, which was in 1969 in Hartford, Connecticut. And this is a picture I took of Buddy with my little Kodak Instamatic camera. And Buddy at that time was playing his 4 by 14 inch Buddy Rich model Slingland snare drum. And after that first night, I became a huge fan, number one of his music. I never heard music like that. Big band, absolutely incredible. Buddy was in fire. And that's what inspired me to one day be a professional drummer and to hopefully have my own big band, which actually came true. That was a picture that started it all. And let me go back here one page so you can see another rare photograph. This is uh this is the one that I took a buddy. Let's see if I can get a better shot because of the light in here. Oh the lighting is. Let's go like this. Okay, that's better. And this was in 1973. And this was my very first meeting with Buddy in 1970. It was the first time I met him. And he's autographing a book for me called A Profile of Buddy Rich Super Drummer. There I am watching him autograph the book for me. I might as well show you this rare picture. The other great Slingerland endorser, Gene Krupa. That's me with Gene Krupa. And this was also on 1971. And he autographed this for me. And I saw him again in 72. This was in 72 right here. That's my brother, my younger brother, Glenn. That's me and Gene Krupa. And let's go to one other page here. I want to show you... Uh, There I am again with Buddy. But this is great. This is the day I had my drum lesson with Buddy. And he let me play on his drum set, his slingling kit. This was in uh, SeaWorld, 1977. So let me show you this unbelievable fact right here, what I found. This was the catalog. This is the 1971 Slingerland catalog. And of course, uh, 
the catalog actually came out in 1970. They're always a year ahead or two years ahead. And these very drums right here, this is it. This is the set that I bought, I ordered, and I received on August of 1970. My Buddy Rich Slingerland 80 n kit. And this is inside the catalog. This is the very factory where those drums were made. This is the Slingerland factory. And as you can read, the world's leading manufacturer of precision percussion equipment. New Slingerland plant and offices, the world's largest and most modern drum plant. At the time, Slingerland was the world's largest drum manufacturer. And this plant was uh, first in operation in 1960. And that's where my Slingerland drums were made. And in the back there, you see just part of the warehouse. But this was the most modern drum plant. And of course, back then, all the drums were made in the USA. You know, you had Rogers, you had Ludwig, Slingerland, Gretsch. And inside this catalog, which I found in one of the boxes, I actually found all the warranty cards. This is the warranty card right here. And let's take a closer look at this here. Let me see if I can just uh, turn this off so we can get better focus on this. Okay, let me see if you can see that. There it is. That's the warranty card for Slingerland. And as you can see, this is where I lived in Windsor, Connecticut. And there's the date when I received the drums. August 23rd of 70, Buddy Rich set 80N, Marine Pearl. And that serial number, I believe, was uh, for the snare drum. And you got one, you got a warranty card for each drum. And of course, uh, with the Buddy Rich kit, you get five drums. As you can see right here, what it says here, congratulations. You are the proud owner of the finest percussion equipment, equipment in the world. Only Slingerland offers a five-year guarantee. And they give you steps on care of your drums. And this was the front part of the warranty card. And this was the back. So that's incredible. I actually found these these five warranty cards inside my Slingerland catalog, which I had inside the box. And let's take a closer look at the the catalog. This is the 71. And there it is. And as you can see, 1968 was one buddy rich. Rejoined Slingerland January of 68. He played right up to April of 1978. And of course, Buddy played Slingerland in the 30s and 40s. And then he rejoined them again from 68 to April of 78. And then, of course, his last uh, five years from 83 to 87, he played Slingerland again. And this was inside the 71 catalog showing the Buddy Rich Pearl snare drum, which I bought. And I bought this one right here. And let me show you this cool advertisement which I found of Buddy inside Downbeat Magazine, which was the largest music magazine from the 30s on up and they're still in business and you can see buddy right there in the sling on ad he's playing that 4x14 
and this is the Chrome version and he gives reasons why he wants to play Slingerland as you can see one of the great reasons I like is here I like the great sound of brass you get with solid brass chrome plated hoops and Slingerland drums and when Buddy rejoined Slingerland they did a great job promoting him and his band and his club and his records and I'm going to be showing you some stuff that I found in my boxes during this time off. Alright, so let's get a close look at the Slingerland Buddy Rich 80N drum set. Of course, first you have to start off with the bass drum. This is a 14 by 24 inch and Slingerland at this time were making incredible drums. When Buddy Rich rejoined Slingerland in 1968, Slingerland made a lot of changes and they made some of the best drums ever. And it's hard to believe that this drum set is now 50 years old. And as you probably know, uh, DW bought the Slingerland Drum Company from Gibson, who had the rights. So hopefully they'll be making this drum set again. I hope they'll be making like a classic Slingerland drum set, and then maybe a modern Slingerland drum set. So I uh, hopefully, if they watch this video, this is the set I bought 50 years ago. So I'm celebrating the golden anniversary of this drum set. And luckily I took incredible super care of these drums. And I wanted to make sure that the, these drums stay in the best possible shape. Okay, like I said, this is a 14 by 24 inch bass drum. And the construction that Slingerland made back then were absolutely incredible. It was a three-ply shell, maple, poplar maple, with solid maple reinforcement rings. And they put a slight lacquer inside the shell. And what was new at the time were these double spurs. These were patented spurs, came out at an angle, and I still love these spurs, man. The drums never move, and for the first time, when Buddy rejoined them, he wanted two spurs, so that's what the Slingerland drum set came with, two spurs. And I, and I think they look great, and they work great. Of course, back then, they had the uh, maple hoops painted it black with the pearl inlays and let me talk about this pearl let me show you this pearl and they called it marine pearl they did not call it white pearl marine pearl and when buddy rejoined Slingerland they put a slight blue tint to it so it would not yellow as fast and for these drums being 50 years old as you can see uh, the color has stayed pretty true and let me show you the catalog here again as you can see that bluish tint you can clearly see in the catalog picture right here and that's the bass drum the 14 by 24 and what was new was the Setomatic Tom holder right here And this version first came out, the f original version was uh, aluminum, and then they went to uh, all chrome in uh, 1970. And the Slingerland chrome was absolutely great. I mean, mine never rusted. I mean, these, these chrome hoops right here actually in 1970 these were chrome over brass 
beautiful hoops. This is a 9 by 13 inch tom. And let me show you right over here because they had the uh, silver and black badge which they started in 1970. Nine by 13 inch tom, chrome over brass hoops. And let me see if I can get a close up here. There's, there's that black and silver badge. And let's get a close look at this. Buddy Rich model, four by 14 inch snare drum, incredible snare drum. This had the straight edge chrome over brass hoops and of course the Zoomatic strainer. Just an incredible snare drum and I'm gonna post a link of my last concert that I did before the virus shut me down of me playing this very drum set with my drum with my big band, with my Ken Loomer big band. So I will definitely post it and I will uh, be playing these drums right here in my house. A little later on I'll, po I'll post another video. Now this particular snare drum is kind of rare. Buddy only played it for three years on and off from 69, 1970 and a little bit part of 1971. Now in the catalog, as you can see, let's go back to the catalog. You can see the advertised, the, this is the 1971 catalog. It's the uh, artist model snare drum. But also in the same catalog, you have the Buddy Rich model snare drum. So you could get whatever snare drum you want if you special ordered it, which I did. As a matter of fact, I got both. I got this snare drum, the Buddy Rich 4x14 right here. They call it the Pearl, Buddy Rich Pearl snare drum. And here is, this is a 5.5x14 Buddy Rich Artist model snare drum. And there you can see that beautiful Pearl. Zoomatic strainer. And it had a very unique butt end right here. It's like a bridge type. Of course, uh, chrome over brass. Stick saver hoops for this uh, snare drum. And on the other Buddy Rich snare drum they had for 1971, it had the straight edge or they call them stick chopper hoops. And of course, you have to have the two 16 by 16 inch floor toms right over here. And let's go over some of this hardware, which at the time was heavy duty hardware for 1970. And, I, and they actually look, look good to me. Now this is, uh, you don't see these stands today. These are, they have three layers to the stand. Right here, so you got, you got the base is only right here. You got the second stage. And third stage. So you got, so you got this right here. First stage right here. Second stage. And then the third stage. Um, what's you, unique about this, the way I ordered it, there are no tilter on this. So the symbols are completely flat. And this had the, uh, the black and gold label back then, as you can see. And the reason for uh, the three stages, because this thing will collapse down to only 20 inches and back then you used to put all the hardware inside a trap case. 
So you can't have like the giant stands they have today. But these stands were made out of heavy gauge steel. They had the big T handles on them. And they really collapse to a very small size. And of course they don't weigh a ton, you can just put them in your trap case. And one of the most famous hi-hats ever made, the Dynamo Slingerland hi-hat. Let's get a close look at the pedal. Slingerland, USA. And of course this was made in the Niles factory. Now what was advanced about this uh, hi-hat stand back then, they were like the first to adjust the uh, spring tension right here with this knob right there. And what's unique about this stand, which is another first, they had these little, this over here turns so you can go from spike to rubber by just turning this knob here. And they got another spike right here. A little bit of low light here. And of course this is the uh, the rocket snare drum stand. As you can tell I took great care of all these stands. They, they're still almost in mint condition for being 50 years old. This is the rocket snare drum stand and this was the first generation because you can they had a lever right here you just press it down right here and you can put the snare drum on and off easily that's the rocket snare drum stand and this is the famous tempo king pedal of course you gotta have the wood beater And here's the back of the two floor toms. And of course, there's the uh, canister drum throne. Gotta have that. So this is my 1970 Buddy Rich Slingerland drum set. Of course, you gotta have the two, the two arms right over here one for the splash and of course one for the ride symbol and like I said this pearl is absolutely gorgeous I wish somebody would be, make this uh, particular version of the Slingerland marine pearl which had a big pattern it had like a little bit of silver a little bit of gray and of course that blue tint to it And it's absolutely a gorgeous, gorgeous drum set. And I use this drum set all the time with my big band. And I've posted hundreds of concerts of me using this big band, this drum set with my big band. So I hope you check it out. Just uh, put in Ken Loomer Big Band. And I also have another, uh, well, I actually have four Slingerland uh, Buddy Rich kits. And I have uh, videos showing me playing them all. So, uh, like I said, these drums made right here at this Niles, Illinois factory, right here. It is a Slingerland plant. Like I said, at the time, it was the world's largest, most modern drum plant. And the Slingerland family, of course, at that time owned it. Bud Slingerland was the uh, president of the company. He owned the drum company. And he wasn't a drummer, but he was a great investor. And in the early 50s, the reason why he bought this new plant, because he got a tip on investing on a new company called Zenith and in the 50s that's when uh, American television really took off 
and he bought a lot of stock in Zenith and he made millions and millions. And that's the reason why he decided to move out of the Chicago plant, which was old, and he went ahead and built his brand new drum factory in Niles, Illinois. And of course, back in the 50s and 60s, everything was made in the USA. All the TVs, you know, the stereos, <laughs> all the drums. So hopefully uh, we can bring all this manufacturer back because I know a lot of the drums are made in China and everything seems to be made in China, all the TVs and stereo. So hopefully uh, we can learn a lesson and bring it back to the USA like these drums. Like I said, here are my warranty cards. Maybe I can, if I take this one out, yeah, you can see it better this way, yeah. There it is. Unbelievable, I actually found this in one of the boxes. Like I said, during this time off, I've been cleaning up the house, going through every closet, every box, and I've been finding a lot of stuff. I can't believe I actually found this inside one of these catalogs. Right in this catalog, I found it inside. This is the catalog as a kid that I was staring and looking at for hours. And I remember I worked all summer long in the summer of uh, 1970 so I can buy these drums. I worked on a tobacco farm in Connecticut to earn the money for this set right here and here it is Slingler Buddy Rich Model 80N and we must go over the symbols of course uh, this is a 20 inch ride 6 inch flash we got your uh, 18 inch thin 18 inch medium thin and I use the 13 inch new beat hi-hats these are all from the 70s I got let's take a back view of this incredible drum set right here and like I said I'll put a link so you'll be able to hear this drum set that I used a couple of months ago just before I got shut down because of the virus hopefully I hope I'll be able to start up again within the next couple of months but you never know what's gonna happen so but the main thing is I, I want everybody to be safe and healthy and and I'm gonna do another video of me playing with this drum set here at my house with this drum set so let me show you I'm gonna to go to the kitchen let me show you what I found in my boxes here let's go over here first let me show you this great downbeat magazine I found in one of the boxes this is a downbeat magazine that my father had and downbeat was the music magazine in the 30s, 40s, and 50s, 60s, 70s, and they're still in publication. But this was the music magazine, especially in the 30s and 40s. And this one my dad had, he gave to me, look at this, May 20th, 1946, on the, on the cover. Look at that, only 20 cents back then. On the cover was Buddy Rich with Frank Sinatra. And the reason for that was uh, Frank Sinatra was back in uh, Buddy's first big band on his own in 1946. I mean, that is a great friend. Of course, uh, they both played together with the Tommy Dorsey band. And I got to show you the inside here. Let me show you the inside because they have a great ad. Let me open this up. 
And look at this here. This is a, this is a Slingerland drum ad for Buddy Rich. What a great ad right here. Keep your eyes on Buddy Rich and his own new orchestra with Slingerland Radio Kings. Of course, Buddy was playing Slingerland Radio Kings during the 30s and 40s. And there it is. There's the Slingerland Radio Kings. And Buddy, like I said, for the last five years of his career, he went back to this very drum set, the Slingerland Radio King. And he said he loved it. He said it was the best drum set he ever played. And what a great ad right here. I'll give you a close-up of this here, what it says about him. Slingland Drums. Of course, back then it was made in Chicago. There's the address of the Chicago factory where these Slingland Radio King drums were made. And that is a cool ad inside this Downbeat magazine. That my dad had, he kept it in super shape. 1946 can you believe that and I found it inside one of my boxes because I had this time off because of the virus and here's another ad let me take this over here to be able to see this better this is a downbeat ad Now this is an interesting picture of Buddy right here. This is from the uh, Willard Alexander Agency. They're the agency that booked Buddy Rich and all the big bands from Count Basie to Woody Herman to Stan Kenton and Buddy Rich. And what makes this picture very unique, you can see Buddy with his slingling set, but he was playing a Slingerland Gene Krupa Sound King Chrome over brass snare drum. Look at that, there it is. Now Buddy used to play that snare drum once in a while. You know, very rarely, but he actually, there's a picture of him playing there. You can see the famous three uh, lines from the Gene Krupa snare drum. And let me show you this picture right here that I took a Buddy. And he was using that same snare drum that night. Gene Krupa Sound King. And this particular set, if you notice, he did not use the set o -matic. Slowly set one. Once in a while, Buddy would want to set without the set o -matic. But that night, this is the picture I took. Uh, this was at the Holiday Inn in Hartford, Connecticut. And he had the uh, the Jane Krupa Sound King snare drum that night. Just like in this picture right here. And I sent away for this picture from the agency. They sent it to me. I found it in the box. Now I love this ad right here. This is also from Downbeat Magazine. And Buddy talking about his new Slingerland drums. It's the now drum for the now sound, says the now drummer, Buddy Rich. Little captions of what he says about the drums. Slingerland is percussion. Of course, this is from the... Uh, Niles, Illinois factory. And here's another downbeat magazine. This one is from, uh, what is it? Okay, June of 73. And like I said, Slingland did a great job promoting Buddy, better than any other drum company. You turn the page, and there's a huge ad. First page you see of Buddy. Slingland drums. And right there you can see Buddy was using the artist model snare drum. Right there. 
a great ad. And here's another one. This is a uh, 1974 Downbeat magazine. For his pages, Slingerland once again gave him a full page ad right in the beginning. And this is to promote his new album, The Roar of 74. And in this one, look, he's playing the Slingerland TDR in this picture. This is the TDR snare drum that Slingerland made for him. It's the Buddy Rich model TDR 5.5 by 14. And this particular snare drum was 5 ply, their new 5 ply model. And of course, this one, <laughs> he's using the Artist model. And in this picture, he's using the Slingerland Gene Krupa Sound King. And. Of course, the other picture I showed him, he's using the 4 by 14. And let's, let's go to this pic, this ad right here. Slingerland was promoting his new nightclub, Buddy's Place. This is a good shot of the uh, Buddy Rich TDR snare drum right there. And I love this picture. I wrote the Slingerland, they gave me this picture. Buddy Rich and Gene Krupa. Of course, Buddy copied Gene Krupa's exact setup. He was the man. That's why Gene Krupa has the setup right here. 24 inch bass drum. Here's Buddy playing the Slingerland 9N Jazz outfit. 20 inch bass drum, 8 by 12, 14 by 14, and the Gene Krupa Sound King snare drum. He was playing in this picture right here. Without a doubt, the two greatest Slingerland endorsees of all time, right here. Well, of course, Gene Krupa puts Slingerland on the map. Here's another Slingerland ad. Like I said, Slingerland did so much for Buddy. And here's one of the percussion profiles of Buddy. And like I said, I found all the stuff in the boxes during this time off. So I hope you enjoyed some of the stuff that I found. And let's go back to the Slingerland Buddy Rich 80 in drum kit. Like I said, I'll, I'll post a link so you'll be able to hear these drums with my big band from a couple of months ago. And I'll be making another special video right here at my house during this time off. Okay, I hope you enjoyed what I think is one of the greatest drum sets ever made. The shell construction, the looks, the marine pearl. And you talk about quality, this drum set is 50 years old. And if you take care of your equipment, look at how good it will look and these drums have lasted a long time and I don't have these drums to look at I want to play them all the time I have hundreds of concerts posted of me playing this drum set and hopefully I'll be back to work soon I hope and pray because uh, two months is like long enough for me but it is what it is and hopefully uh, we can get the music back again, especially big band music. So please check out my Ken Loomer big band and all my videos. So this is Ken Loomer saying goodbye, stay healthy and safe.